<laughs> well, hi there, and welcome to Fairy House. We're here for the Easter festival at Fairy House. Can't believe the weather we've got this afternoon, but what's the word in association with Ladbrokes from Fairy House this weekend? Joined by David Jennings and Brian of the uh, of the race and posing. What a day! Unbelievable. I was walking in, and they were showing a replay of last year's race. And it's like a total different country. I mean, uh, unbelievable. We're the winner last year. last year. You're better on soft ground, Norton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian is a better tipster on soft ground, so <laughs> yeah. watch out. Yeah. Well, we'll quickly uh, glance onto today's action. Two Grade Ones. We'll start with the Mare's Grade One. Honeysuckle favourite here. Um, to be perfectly honest, she's a slightly bigger price than I expected her to be, although she has shortened into 13 to 8 from 15 to 8. Your thoughts, Jenna? Yeah, I, I think with Honeysuckle, she's the right favourite, and you know, if she won, you wouldn't be surprised at all. But I just think it's a race where she's had a setback, she was supposed to go to Cheltenham. It's a race with so much value when you look beyond her. I'm not saying she can't win, but I just think there's value elsewhere. And the one I've landed where is on. Where's the value, Jenna? Well, the one I've landed on, and I thought 16s was a huge price a couple of days ago, it's now 14s and 12s. Tin Tangle yep. has 17 lengths to make up on. Um, on the favourite from their running here earlier on the season. But speaking to Gordon, she wasn't right that day. I thought she ran a cracker at Cheltenham in the Mayor's Novice Herd. She was the one that was plugging on after last. She was keen the whole way through. And I, she's the one that I just think will definitely finish in the first four. There might be one to beat her, but at the prices, I think she's the value, Tim Tangle. What about you, Brian? I'd be thinking similarly along the same lines as David. I actually also like Black Tears. I was agonisingly on her at Cheltenham, but I backed her with a firm that didn't play the four places. So, Sick of yeah, We were sitting was. in the press room in Cheltenham, and Brian's here and told me I backed Black Tears at 50 to 1, was it? Yeah. Well, 50 to 1. And this horse straight at 1.1 1. 1 yeah. something and running. I tell you, I was getting I very giddy, straight. but I'm not going to go with Black Tears in this one. Just, I think uh, Caravation now, obviously, it's just, she's a very hardy mare, but I'm just looking out at that weather and I'm getting a little bit worried because she is a stare, she does like to get her toe in, but I think she'll just try to go off in front. She's a hardy, so she's coming here on uh, bidding for a hat trick. I think she might maybe fill the frame. I can see uh, Honeysuckle is going to be very hard to beat, but I was just kind of similar to David, I might just try and get something in the frame and Caravation, That's big price. You're making cases that don't know, need to be made. I know, I know, Honeysuckle I know. wins. It's, okay? just a, it's just a price thing. The yeah, price is, is good. Thing. I had around about 10 to Value. 11 shot. I couldn't okay. believe the price she was. stuck in. Yeah. I have. Well, if you get a new hand to the, Yeah, let's move on to the other great one of the afternoon. It's the Reiner Gold Cup. Just the five go to post here. I think this is an intriguing betting heat though. Yeah, it is very intriguing. It's disappointing, but it's intriguing. And maybe if you had a superstar like Juice de Geneva in it, from a betting point of view, it wouldn't be as interesting. Uh, the one that I'm very, very sweet on is Voida Rev here. I think back going right-handed on good ground. Uh, I think he would have finished ahead of real steel in the JLT at Chatham. I thought Ruby still looked to be travelling reasonably well. Jumping is obviously an issue, but if you go back to earlier on in the season, beat Hardline by seven lengths in a grade two at Punchestown. Similar type of race here, small field, right-handed. I just think... These are his terms and conditions, and I, I'd much prefer him to real seal. Megley can, you can't trust. Winter escape burst a blood vessel last time, and Cuba Mania isn't good enough. So it is a case of process of elimination. Yeah, you, yeah. Brian? Like, you're saying you can't trust Megley can. I think he gets a bit of a raw deal. I was just looking back through his form last night, and I think maybe just a leper sound. He's just, he maybe, maybe he's remembering yeah. that day that he ran out. Like, he's after running two solid races, I think yeah. he's probably... two tough races, though. He's coming know, here in the back he... in two bruising battles, like... But would you think that is he's he just the kind of horse that might take care, takes maybe, care of himself yeah. a yeah, little I, I, bit, I like, and he's probably same. able yeah. for yeah. it? Yeah, I'd be the exact same opinion as you. And he I is think. better going right-handed than left-handed. Yeah, no bit. doubt. Winter Escape obviously brings the best form, having beaten Apu Tard, but what, obviously, coming here after bursting blood vessels, you just... It's not... Uh, it's not ideal, let's put it that way, but I just think Megley can gets a bit of a raw deal and 11 to 4, 3 to 1, whatever he is, yeah. it's probably a bet. Yeah, that's fair enough. Let's move on to the uh, big action, of course, of the Easter Festival here at Fairy House. It is the uh, Irish Grand National, half a million quid in the pot. It just changes the rate, the complexion of the race so much from what it used to be, Jenna, mm. didn't it? Like, Yeah, now it's a proper... Like, a lot of these are running in grade 1s and will be running in grade 1s, yeah. so there's real quality. Think about last year, Ken Boy was beating this off 10 stone, yeah. you know, he came down. It's, it's not quality of race now. Yeah, no, it's a cracker, and and like if you're looking for a kind of a quality angle, you've got the likes of Shattered Love and and uh, Two A Per Me. They're real classy horses that wouldn't look out of place in Grade Ones. And Shattered Love, Rama, and the Gold Cup. The one that I fancied for the last six weeks in this race. Jockey Buckins have probably put me off a little bit, but Say Jersey was the one that I've liked. Yeah. I tipped it up in the paper about three weeks ago. Um, I just think he's got the ideal profile for the race. If you go back to last season, you ran a beginner's chase here, and he did put it up to Kemba. He was beating six lengths in the end. This year, his form behind Shady Operator and Bally Ward, where he got, made a mistake at the last, stumbled on the run-in, I just thought, now back on good ground with blinkers on, off 10 stone three, Katie Farrell taking weight off. Uh, I think 
he ticks a lot of boxes for me. If he gets into a rhythm early, I think he's got a great chance. The other ones I, I, I like are Snugsburg Benny, who I think is tailor-made for a race like this. Uh, he'll be held up, he jumps well, likes big fields, I think he's got a big chance. And uh, Gun Digger, I think, is the best at Gordon's. And one other one, because you're allowed four in <laughs> Yeah, that. absolutely. Shady Operator, I think, Shady is operator. one that could run well. And I know my colleague Brian is pretty yeah. sweet on that. Yeah. Do you think they've wasted the handicap mark in 2A per me a little bit? Like if one four, one five seven, yeah. they wouldn't let him run off top weight in the Paddy Power off 150, like. I think, speaking to Noel, he said if they had and known the Irish National was the plan and not the grade ones, they wouldn't have ran him at Clonmel. So yeah, 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 it's yeah. it's just a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, it's like, a bit unfortunate. A lot of yeah. weight. What about you, Brian? Oh, two-way per me is the, is the big fancy. Uh, I think we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago and I went back to my 16 to 1. I still think he's probably valued at this, at this price. Uh, yeah, 10 like, to 1. By the way, just to elaborate yeah. sizes, they go 8 to 1 the field. They put any second now as favourite. Can you have him as a genuine favourite for this race? No. Ground would put me off him now. Yeah. Uh, but now that he's got his head in front, and he was quite impressive, I thought, in the Kim Muir, um, I think he still has got a few pounds in hand, but just a ground for me would be a big worry. Yeah, all right, Brian, go on. Yeah, You're yeah, making no, your case for two per me. Yeah, no, I just think you were saying about grade one horses running this. I was half fancying this lad in a Ryanair if he same. was to turn up. Yeah, so, same. I mean, look, was it our Duke one off? 11.4, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. He's carrying 11 stone. It's not ideal, but I, I think he could be a class horse. The ground isn't going Sorry, to be a worry. Sorry, I said he won a class. It was Turles. Yeah, Turles. Turles. Yeah. And that was a, a storming run because he hit the fourth last, stayed on to beat sub lieutenant. Oh, obviously, he's waning a bit. And just at the opposite end of the spectrum there, you got Shady Operator. If you yeah. fancy, say, Jersey, obviously, Shady Operator beat him in his beginner's chase. Didn't get a clear run at Cheltenham in the close quarters. JJ runners. Seven looking for back to back wins in the race. Mm. JJ Seven is some man. I love JJ Seven. Yeah. He's just Big brilliant. Oh, just yeah. in general, or <laughs> as a jockey. Oh, in general, yeah. In fairness, <laughs> You know what you're getting with JJ. He's just pure class, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. He had a Cheltenham winner. Right, okay. We're gonna get. We're, we're gonna have t three stabs each, shall we? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. We, we, okay. we'll go okay, with the three. Right. I mean, don't, don't keep Say down. Jersey. Say Jersey. Yeah. Snugsburg Benny. Yeah. Gun digger. Okay. Uh, two A per me. Shady operator and Snugsburg Benny with the ground coming in. Yeah, well. I'm with Snugsburg Benny. That is he, my uh, main chance. selection. Yeah. Uh, also, be mentioned Shady operator and uh, up near maybe a pair of brown eyes as well. But uh, those are one, two, three for the Irish National. Elsewhere on the card on Monday, uh, you like one in the first, that novice's handicap hurdle, Jenny? I do. I think if, if Serious Ego didn't run last time um, on the inside track at Limerick, I think he'd be a pretty short price favourite here. And this ground, this race is tailor-made from big field, strong traveller, should have won at Navan where he made a mistake at the last, was very impressive at Leopard's end of time before. I think he's off 115. I think off that, I think this is tailor made for him. Okie doke. Uh, anyway, anything Call else? after you, of course, Tom. What? Serious ego. <laughs> Serious ego, absolutely. Yeah. You're never going to let me live down the dreamboat, Dave, are you? <laughs> right, go on. Oh, no, yeah. I, I had a quick look and I'm just nothing out of the ordinary. I might just put up one at, maybe maybe not even for tomorrow, but for future reference. There's a horse called Felon Dairy. Felon Do Dairies. Now, yeah. we're all, we know these Fakir Do Dairies and blah, yeah. blah, blah, whatever. But this Felon Do Dairy, now he's very hard himself. But when he learns to race, I think he has a big engine. Mightn't be today or tomorrow, should I say, but... I think um, he could go well at the price. He could tomorrow, go well at yeah. the price. Anything else on the on the Monday car for you? Yeah, um, I, I, I think um, potentially Dr. Phoenix could be overpriced in the Devonish chase. It's it's obviously no one to sow, which is a little bit disappointing, but I thought he'd got a big chance. Cur Sublime in the juvenile hurdle was, um, you know, he just bumped into one at Cheltenham. If that race hasn't taken his toe and if the ground isn't too quick, I think he'll take a, a hell of a lot of beating. And just one that I'm very sweet on, on Sunday, which is today in the 320, the rated novice chase. Uh, I think... Agent Baru, who won at this meeting last year for Tom Gibney, I think he's well handicapped off a mark of 124, and it wouldn't surprise me if this has been the plan since day, this day last year. Um, I think with the ground drawing, he's got a great chance. That's something, when you're looking at your race card, if you are here at Ferries, look for the trainers with Mead underneath your name. It's always significant. Same with Porter's Town as well. You've got to watch the Kildare trainers. Always have one laid out, but do you think he could be one? Yeah, I do. I just think small field, and I, don't be surprised if you see him making the running today. I think you'll see a switch of tactics. Good stuff. Right, that's time for our best bets so over the couple of days at Ferries. His channel. We'll start with you. Yeah, Agent Baru in the 320 um, on Sunday in the Power Gold Cup, which is of course the 425. I like Voidarev, and in the first race at Ferries on Monday, I'll go for Serious Ego. Brian? Yes, I'm going to go with Two A Permi, obviously in the Irish Grand the National. National. Yeah. I'm going to go with the uh, the likable rogue, Mengli Khan, in the Ryanair Gold Cup, the 425. And for the Dempsey's, an each way stab on Caravation in the Grade 1 Mayor's Race, which is 250. Oh, good oak. Well, I'm going to go with Snugsburg Benny to land the national for Liam Cusack. Honeysuckle is the good thing in the Mayor's Hurdle. And maybe way back home in the Juvenile Hurdle for Paddy Roach, who absolutely loves it here at Fairy House. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week with more What's the Word. Thank you.